The last part is to graph. Hooray, it's a bit fun. So let's have a look at this. Put it all together. Put it all together. I know that there is going to be a, um, a domain restriction like this. I know that when I went through this, I was trying to find a stationary point, right? And then I determined the only possible stationary point is not a stationary point. Okay, let's put it all together, right? The domain restriction tells me I'm going to have some asymptotes like so, right? I know there's going to be a point of inflection, but then, you know what? I don't know very much else apart of, of, about this thing apart from that, right? I actually need some intercepts, yeah? I've got x equals negative 1 and x equals 0 as my vertical asymptotes, but I kind of need to know where I collide with the coordinate axes the x-axis at least, because you can see I don't collide with the y-axis because of that nasty vertical asymptote. So therefore, to get my x-intercepts, what do I do? I let y equal 0. Now, when you look at something like this, it's a bit intimidating because of the fact that there's a log in there, right? But don't, don't be afraid, yeah. When you put in 0 there, I have enough space just down here. I won't actually solve it. Um, you're going to get log of that equals 0. But remember, this just means log of base e, right? So therefore, this thing is e to the power of 0, which is 1, right? So you get this being equal to 1. And so you, you can multiply across, noting that x can't equal negative 1. And you just get a regular old quadratic to solve. Um, admittedly, as you can see by the coefficients, it's not a nice quadratic. You've got to go back to the formula again. But if I recall, I think you get this as your pair of roots, right? Which is a Beautiful number, good pair of numbers, okay? So we've got that. Now, because I'm trying to graph, right, actually it's more useful to me to get some decimal values for those because I, I have no idea where they are, right? Um, so I think from memory, well, I actually have it on my calculator right now. I've got minus 0.618 as the left-hand one, and that would mean it would be 1.618 for the right-hand one, okay? Now, minus 0.618 is parallelly close to my point of reflection. Okay, so for all point terms and like, you know, looking at this, I'm pretty much going to put them one on top of another, right? I'm going to get something like this. There's my point of inflection right next to it, right? And there's that intercept that I got from solving this. And then over on the right hand side, um, 1.618, well if that's 0.618, then 1.618 would be a bit further. Okay? And you can check my signs, you're going to get that kind of shape over there. Adjustments, but you get the idea. Okay. Um, I have no turning points anywhere, there's no other kind of unusual behaviour over here on the right. There's no wiggles, because I already determined the only point of inflection is right in there. Okay? Yeah. Sorry, you won't answer this. That's okay. Thing, but I had one before this question. I didn't know whether the cubic went this way or that way. Yeah, sure. You're talking about. Hold on, are you talking about this part over here? That cubic? Because that was the only cubic guy. No, 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 sorry, uh, that one. The cubic part, like the, the point left hand side. Oh, you mean this part here? How do you know it goes this way? Yeah, well, sure, okay. So, great question. Um, with this, we're right at the edge of, like, when I say right at the edge. This function is right at the edge of what we can deal with in what we call an analytical way, right? So, for example, um, okay, something like this, right? <coughs> this has a root. I know it has at least one. All cubic curves have to have a root because they've got to start negative and go positive or vice versa. They've got to collide somewhere in there because they're continuous functions. However, um, I have no idea where that root is. And we can't, you remember I established before when we were look, talking about um, sums and products of roots, etc., roots and coefficients. There's no, there's no cubic formula that's practical for us to use here, okay? Uh, that doesn't mean I can't find roughly enough for me to graph where it collides with the axis. We're going to learn those techniques when we go into polynomials, okay? When you have a look at this, I mean, you could different, I mean, we have the derivative, right? Where's the derivative? Uh, there it is, right there. Okay, so I try to work out well what happens between negative one and zero. Well, I, could, I could put something into this, right? Um, I could sum a value in, and that would tell me really quickly because I know it's never going to turn. Um, well, let's just do this, right? So when x equals negative a half, negative half, is that okay? I'm just trying out a value that's unfortunately I can't put any whole numbers in there, but we'll deal with it. Uh, the derivative is going to be equal to one and a half on 
What am I going to get down here? 1 on 4 plus negative. Uh, 1 on 4 minus negative. negative. I'm just going to do the straight substitution first. Uh, that's negative half. Yep, like that. Okay. Now, I actually don't care what the value is. We were trying to work out, is it going up or is it going down? Okay. Now, you can see here, positive, positive, negative. Like, this is my factor thing, right? So it's like, oh, these positives don't affect the sign. I've only got that one negative. So that tells me I have to be decreasing, and I never turn around. I never, ever turn around. So therefore, it just goes down all the way. Okay? Now, that's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a blunt instrument to use, but it, like as in, I just kind of had to pick a value. But based on everything I knew, that's all I need to know if it goes down in that fashion. Could you just... Do that the as x approaches zero, like, and then see um, where going. Yes, you can. So, uh, hmm. so what you could do? So, am I asking like you're trying to put values in here? Is that what you're suggesting? If you want to take limiting behavior, um, there's there's no reason why you can't do it. I guess you would do it with this, but I don't think it's any quicker or more conclusive than what I did here, right? For example, if I put some values in, I would need to put at least like a couple of values. Like I'm, I would expect I get something negative, but that doesn't mean like it doesn't go up and just comes from a really, really negative to a not that negative, right? So whereas this tells me I'm decreasing, like that qualitatively tells me in that little area, I have to be going down and I never turn around because I, I found no stationary points, okay? So I think probably that's the way that I would go about it. Is that the point where there's the point of inflection? Isn't it on the x-axis? Um, do you mean like, do they coincide? Yeah. I don't think so. Because yeah, this and this are not yeah. in fact equal. Yeah. But they are, they're vanishingly close together. Um, for the purposes of my graph, I don't think I could... I would never expect a student to be able to distinguish... Like, sorry, did, can someone just generate that again? What is root 2 minus 2? 0.58 blah blah blah. I am not going to ask someone to be accurate to the, you know, to bit point zero 0.04 of a, you know, on their graph. That's a bit ridiculous. So if someone drew their point of inflection right on top of their, their x-intercept, I wouldn't mark that down like that. Um, I think that's fine. To answer Nikita's question, can't you use the second derivative? Now you've found the values, so you know one is concave up and one is going to be concave down. Yep. So. Uh, no, no, not enough. It's not enough because I can be. Um, what were we talking about? So, for example, I will determine once I do my second derivative test um, here, right? I determine that I'm concave up and then concave down. Right? But I can increase or decrease over that interval. Like, Nikita's wondering, do I start up here and go down here? Or vice versa? Right? I can still do the other way, knowing this, right? Because I would draw a graph something like this. Oh, I would hit the, it would go, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, oh, for this graph, it would work. For this particular graph, it would be okay because of these asymptotes that I have. It would mean I, have to, I would have to collide, which I can't do. But I think this is probably. This is a more direct way of saying, oh, it starts up there and it goes down there because that's what the gradient tells me. Okay, yeah, of course. Okay. All right, so any other questions? Divya. So, as a nice one, I feel like that's cool. So, can I use a table of values to find out where it starts? Um, yeah, so do you mean a table of values for y or for the second derivative? Yes, you can. I, I think you, you can. However, I don't know. For me, at least, I think that's less obvious. I'm happy for you to go with that. Obviously, it's less work. I don't have to evaluate this thing. Um, but for me, like, I don't, I don't look at this and say, oh, I must be from here. Right? That takes another step of thinking. Um, if you make that step of thinking, then fine. But this is really obvious to me.